All right, ladies, by my count, it is, by my time, my watch, it is 10 o'clock, so I think we'll go ahead and get started now. Um, welcome to our very first virtual information session and tour for Guidepost Montessori. My name is Heidi Morrison. I'm with the programs team. I'm one of the team members who will help out behind the scenes in the back office to open and support our beautiful school. I've been in the Montessori world as an educator, administrator, um, more recently as a parent for 20 years, and I've helped to open schools and Montessori programs in both New York and Colorado. Um, and I am thrilled to be able to introduce our very first Guidepost School in Colorado to all of you. So thank you for taking the time to join us this morning. We're um, very happy to have you here. Here we go. This is our very first Colorado Guidepost Montessori in the beautiful town of Parker. It's on 20 Mile Road, if you haven't driven by it already. It's between Lincoln Avenue and Ponderosa Drive. So just blocks away from Parker Road, from Highway 83. So it's a perfect location and it serves all of the residential communities in Parker. It's very easy to get to. Um, so do drive by and at some point we'll be ready for you to come in and stop by and say hello. Um, and we'll keep you notified and updated on um, those events when they happen. Our goal at Guidepost Montessori is to make sure that we provide high quality Montessori education and we make that available to as many children as we possibly can. So Guidepost Montessori is part of Lake Forest, California based higher ground education. Its mission is to mainstream and modernize Montessori. Guidepost is part of an international network of schools. So what this means for you as parents and for your child is that you can leverage the best education has to offer and the resources of a much larger network of schools. But we are committed to ensuring a very personal connection at each one of our schools. Um, so we get to know our families really well. We connect with our parents and with our children and we very much are a part of the community that we are based in. Uh, being part of a larger network of schools though also means that we are in, a, in the very unique position of being able to attract and hire some of the best teachers in the field. For you also, what this means is that you can leverage our child care services across multiple schools in the country. So if you're traveling for work or if you're relocating, you can ensure that your child will get a consistent and quality education at any one of our different guidepost locations. We also have recently launched a Guidepost at Home program where we can help arrange a nanny share until you're ready to enroll your child into our school. And we have an academy of thought and industry brand that provides quality education to middle school and high school students as well. So as you can see, we're pretty much committed to serving your needs and providing quality education from the time your child is born all the way through high school. So <laughs> stay with us. We know what we're doing. As many of you know, we moved this info session to virtual in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus. So we wanted to address this before we dive into more about our programs and our school. Guidepost puts the health and safety of our children, our families and our staff as our very top priority. Presently, as of March the 12th, we've had no cases of staff or children reported with the virus at any of our schools nationwide. But we are already preparing as we know that this reality is, is likely. So as a result, we put some extra measures in place at all of our schools, um, including some of the following. Extra sanitization measures of schools, reducing exposure by temporarily canceling tours and limiting school access to some of the children. No touch greetings at drop off and pick up. Three times a day sanitization of surfaces and classrooms increased nightly sanitizations by custodial crews, and greatly limited external visitors to all of our schools. We are very closely monitoring CDC and state health communication and have a task force at Guidepost and Higher Ground committed to monitoring the situation daily and responding to events as they come up. So we will be available to after this session to answer any further questions that you have around this because we know that this is an important matter for our community and for all of our families. On to our beautiful school. So we are scheduled to open in May of 2020, just two months away. We are opening this location with infant through kindergarten. 
We will initially open with about 70 children in five classrooms and will eventually grow to a community of 165 children and uh, 10 classrooms. It's a beautiful space that has been completely renovated. We've just completed the furniture setup of all of our classrooms. We've renovated the building from top to bottom. It's all new and sparkling and beautiful and you'll get to see that through our virtual tour later today. In terms of ratios, it's important to note that all student-child ratios meet or exceed Colorado state standards, Colorado state standards. So what that means is for the infant program, which is 12 weeks to about 18 months, we have one teacher for every five children. I'm sorry, excuse me, every three children. For the toddler program, we have one teacher for every five children. And for our children's house, which is ages three to six years, we have one teacher for every 10 children. So those are our ratios. Here are some of our beautiful guidepost classrooms. They are unique in so many ways, as you will see from the virtual tour, but I do wanna point out a few things before we, uh, we move on. Our environment is very different from a traditional preschool. Our classrooms are often twice the size of a typical traditional preschool room so that the children have room to move about freely and so that we can have more space for our beautiful shelves and materials. We have very large windows in, at this location in Parker, lots and lots of natural light in every classroom that you'll visit. We use high quality natural wood furniture for tables, for shelves, for, for, for chairs, and lots of organic materials in the environment. So you'll see ceramic, you'll see pewter, you'll see metal, even glass for our very young ones. Um, everything's designed to look aesthetically pleasing and attractive, um, but more on this later as we walk through the space. Many of our prospective families come to us with so many varying degrees of knowledge about Montessori. So I'm gonna to touch on a few key principles um, just to give you a very brief overview. One of the first things to note about Montessori is that it's designed to be very natural and a joyful experience for children. The classroom is filled with beautiful materials, all meant to be touched and played with, and they're extremely ap appealing to the children. Teaching is individualized to every child's needs. So instead of one lesson plan for the whole class, our teachers are trained to do individual lesson plans for every single child based on specific markers that they're looking for in terms of the, your child's development in different areas. Their speech development, gross motor development, socialization skills, and so on. So once the teacher gives a lesson to the child, the child is free to work with that material um, for as long as they would like without un other children jumping in or interrupting them. Once the child is immersed and has completed the material and puts it back on the shelf, that's then the signal that it's available to all the other children in the classroom. So in this kind of an environment, as you can imagine, children take a lot of ownership over what work they choose to work with, how long they work with, and it's amazing when we trust them with this ownership, how they make some wonderful choices um, in, their, in, their, in picking what they, would like to, uh, what they would choose to work with. Another thing that is really important with Montessori and that is unique to it is the idea of a mixed age classroom. What this means essentially is that there is a range of age groups within each class. So in our children's house classroom, there's a three year age span. So children between the ages of three years old and six years old in the same environment. Um, this benefits both the older and the younger children. The older ones become leaders and mentors and role models in their environment. And the younger ones are constantly motivated to try and achieve what they see the older ones doing. Um, it also helps to develop a growth mindset for our children where they see, you know, skills are built over time. I don't have to acquire this skill immediately. Um, a little boy sees that something he didn't know a couple of months ago, perhaps counting numbers from one to 100, is now something that he is an expert and a master in, so much so that he can now present this lesson or show it to another child. And then also because of the age range, there's no real awareness of competition among the children. They seem to realize that everybody is essentially learning at their own pace and they accept that. Everyone's at a slightly different point in their learning and in their development. And so no one's really self-conscious about what particular skill and how far along they are in that particular skill. 
And it's wonderful too because it minimizes transitions for the child. So you know that your very young ones really thrive on consistency. Here they have the same classroom, the same teacher, the same peer group for three full years. So essentially when they start off the school year fresh every year, they can immerse themselves in, in learning and pretty much take off from whichever point they stopped at, as opposed to spending the entire first month getting to know a new teacher and getting to know new peers. It's a wonderful way for them to really just feel confident and to build self-esteem and to be consistent for them as well. We do provide uninterrupted work periods at each level in our classrooms. So for the toddler children, we try to help them build concentration and focus for up to two hours at a time. We don't start off with that. We probably start off with an activity that requires a few minutes of concentration and slowly over time building practice, allowing them to repeat and the opportunity to really immerse themselves in the materials and the learning. They will build up to um, 10 minutes of focus and concentration, then 30, then 45 and so on. And it's the same thing with the children in our children's house. Um, they start off by very short lessons and very short, short group meetings that are maybe five minutes to seven minutes. And slowly over the course of the year, you'll see their focus and their concentration begin to increase so that by the end of the year, they can essentially focus on one activity for 20 to 30 minutes, even longer at a time. Starting with very young children, we set up what we call a paired environment. What this means is that we create a safer and a simpler microcosm of our world in which everything we set up for the children is so that they can succeed at doing real tasks, not play tasks, but real ones. So our preschoolers use real utensils and bowls. They prepare food for themselves. They prepare food for each other. They learn skills like setting the table, washing dishes, arranging flowers, and so on. Um, if you've noticed your little one around the house, you'll know that they love to do real things that they see adults do. They want to be very much like the adult in their community. And so this helps them realize that they are capable contributors to the community that they are a part of. So a child, for example, might begin Monday morning by snipping flowers, putting water in vases, watering plants, beautifying the environment, scrubbing a few dishes, preparing snack, really feeling like they have something to offer, which also then in turn builds their self-esteem. The Montessori classroom is filled with very carefully and scientifically designed materials. They're very specific to the Montessori method. These are presented to the child in a very specific sequence as well. And so there is a special training that teachers have to go through in order to know how to use these materials. And it is one of those markers that makes guideposts stand out. Um, we are very lucky in that we have recently launched our own teacher training program. It's called the Prepared Montessorian. And a lot of our teachers go through this program before they start in their classrooms. It also provides them with a mentor who can coach them and help them through um, any difficult moments that they have or if they have a question about what lesson to present next with the child or what, uh, what um, specific concept comes next in, in, in a sequence, they have a mentor who can provide them with that. And why this is important too is because it attracts teachers because there is a consistent um, a schedule for professional development that they can engage with. And um, if you know teachers worldwide, you know that they love to learn, this never ends. And so they really do take advantage of all of these courses and teacher trainings that are provided through the prepared Montessori. One of the things we really spend some time with our teachers on is um, the ability to carefully observe each child, to really get to know him or her, and to know what developmental markers to look for so that you know what lesson to present next for that particular child. Um, and they also get a lot of lessons in the theory of child development that underlies the entire Montessori approach. And then one of the things that people always talk about with Montessori and is actually very true about the method is that the result is a very advanced academics at a very young age. And so very often children will finish off their time in our children's house, their kindergarten year, being able to read fluently, being able to write, being able to add, subtract, multiply big numbers, work with place value. 
and um, even work with fractions in some cases. And the reason that this works so well is because the Montessori materials are so concrete and so beautiful that children are able to work with them without even realizing that they're working with these truly big concepts that later on they'll be taught to abstract with. But in our, in our environments with the hands-on materials, everything's made to look very, very concrete. So that's just a little bit about Montessori. And now from the parent perspective, we'll talk a little bit about the things that matter a lot to you. So what is our school day? Our core school day hours are from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. But what's really important to note with Guidepost is that your tuition payment also includes extended day hours. So you know that a lot of, actually most other programs in schools will charge you an extra fee for early morning care and for after school care. And that's not the case with Guidepost. Um, we allow you to drop off as early as 7 a.m. and to pick up as late as 6 p.m. at no additional charge. It's all included in your tuition payment. So that's really a wonderful perk about coming to, um, with coming to Guidepost. Um, we also, of course, will be offering extracurricular activities, music, and so on. Um, as our school community grows, there will be opportunities for your child to participate in a variety of after-school extracurriculars. And we have a beautiful private outdoor play space that you will be able to see. Um, and they will go out to play every single day. Uh, this will, if, our, if your children are staying at school for a longer day, for an extended day, they will go out multiple times. And if they are here just for the morning or for half the day, they will go out at least once in the day, which is, you know, is really important for both socialization and for development of their gross motor skills. We're also very lucky at this location that we have a, a very big indoor space that we call the gross motor room. And we will use this if weather conditions are such that we absolutely cannot go outside during the day. And this is a space that is big enough for them to roll around and play and crawl and jump and hula hoop and all kinds of wonderful things. Guidepost Montessori implements a very secure system of keypad code entry. So we know how important it is to keep your children safe at school, and hence we've already set up all of these steps. There's always a representative from the school staff to greet families at the entrance to school at the beginning of the day. Guidepost uses a secure system called Smart Care for checking children in and out of school. A child cannot be checked in or out without a parent or a caretaker using Smart Care. And we have plenty of, we're very lucky here, we have a parking lot that is just for our school. And so we have plenty of parking for parents to personally walk their child into the building and all the way into their classroom, if that's what they would like to do as well. A little bit about the schedule for the day. So it's different for each one of our programs. For our infant program, as you can tell, the schedule here is laid out from, the, from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Obviously, we don't expect that too many of our children will be doing such a long day, but, um, uh, but it is laid out for you so that you can see what your child will do at different points during the day. Several times, obviously, for group time, for singing songs and reading stories, several snack times during the day, nap time as well, diapering and hand washing, individual lessons during our short work period for the infants. I think as a parent myself, one of the most important things to know here is that it is our goal to partner with each family because we know that every child is different. So we, what we want to do is have our school and this program be an extension of your home. So we want to partner with you. We want to know what you do with your child at home. We, know, we want to know what they eat at home, what your schedule is for them. And then that's the schedule that we will essentially try to follow when they are here with us in the infant program. Here's a sample of a toddler schedule for the day. Again, we've laid it out from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., starting with early care, working through a work period of two hours from 8.30 to 10.30. Then they'll have outdoor play, lunchtime, circle time together, um, where they can have a chance for socialization. Of course, they will nap, and then the last half hour of our nap period is what we call a gentle wake up so that we can slowly get them ready to schedule into the next part of their day, which is either dismissal or going out to play again and, and having an afternoon snack. So that's what it, it looks like for a toddler. And in the children's house, which is ages three to six, their work period is slightly longer because these children can focus for longer periods of time. 
So their work period is from 8.30 to 11.15 in the morning. And during this work period, they'll do a variety of different things. They might do some individual work, some group work, which is a small group of three or four children. They might have a special lesson with their teacher or multiple lessons. And they might do some large group work with the whole class where they're reading a special book or learning about an animal or a different part of the world. Um, those children who will stay all day will have lunch, obviously, in their classroom. And lunch in a children's house is wonderful because it provides a chance for us to really um, delve into what we call grace and courtesy, which is just another word, way of saying good manners. So <laughs> please and thank you. And can you pass the salt, please? And here's how I use my napkin and set the table and say, excuse me, and so on. Um, the younger ones will have a nap or a rest period, and the older ones will do their afternoon work period during um, this part of the day between 12.45 and 3. And then if they aren't dismissed to go home, they will have more outdoor playtime and snack time um, and extended day activities. All right, so this is the part of the, uh, the presentation that everybody's been waiting for. I'm going to take you through three of our environments. The first is our NEATO environment. There's Asha. So NEATO means nest in Italian. So our idea is to provide a space of warmth and security for our children who will be in this program. The ratio is one teacher to every three children. And this space is set up for children who are 12 weeks to 18 months old. Although some of them might move out of this space if the teachers and the parents feel that they are ready for the young toddler environment. As you can tell, everything is open. There are no play pens, nothing to stop them from moving around. It's all very safe. It's beautiful. I'm sure a lot of you have read a lot about or seen a Montessori floor bed. I just wanted to point that out over there. It's that beautiful space with the pillows. Provides a space for extra movement for your child. Of course, there's a lot of natural light in this room and all of the materials are wood. This is also a space that is going to be very rich in language. So the teachers will provide a chance for the children to have lots of story time, songs, finger play, even for the very littlest ones. They spend a lot of time talking to them. And then for the ones who are ready to move around the space, there are little activities put out on shelves so that they can sit at a shelf and pull something out and play musical instruments and so on. All of our classrooms, of course, always have a bathroom in there. Here's the diapering area, very important for parents to see that, in the little cubbies. So that is our neato space. All right, I'm gonna take you into one of our toddler spaces, my personal favorite. So here it is. As you can see, it's a really big space because toddlers need to move and run around. This is an astonishing time of growth for your child. This space is set up for children who are 18 months to 36 months. They will grow tremendously in the areas of language, gross motor development, and independence. So they need this big space. The materials, the furniture, everything is child-sized, but very real. So as you can see, there's not much plastic, hardly any plastic at all in this environment. They will learn things like toileting, socializing, how to take turns. There'll be time for them to play with all of these beautiful wooden materials and explore this environment. Toddlers love real things, so they will spend a lot of time preparing food, serving themselves food and serving their friends food learning to wash and clean up after themselves. There's an art area there. So that is one of our beautiful toddler spaces. I'm gonna take you outside now so that you can see the outdoor space. And the sun's out, yay! This is our outdoor space and our playground. 
for the three to six age group. As you can see, it's beautiful natural wood. There are picnic tables because the children might sometimes eat lunch out here. Space, lots and lots of space for them to run around and play. And there on the other side of the fence is the area for the toddlers to play as well. So it's a smaller playground structure right here where they will be able to play. Little slides and a ramp for them to run. Benches out here, lots of toys that we'll be putting out soon. So that's our outdoor space that I just wanted you to see. And then really quickly, I'm going to show you our children's house space, which is for children ages three to six. So this is a very large and beautiful room that can take up to 20 children. Lots of beautiful wood materials laid out on the shelves. There's a language area with letters and books where they'll learn to read and write. A cultural area with maps and flags, and musical instruments. A botany area with leaves. They'll learn about animals and different classification of animals. There are beautiful math materials laid out on the shelves. They will learn to count, starting with numbers zero to nine, moving all the way up to fractions through all the operations. Here's practical life, where they will learn table washing, cloth washing, hand washing, flower arranging, food preparation. Everything is just waiting to be played with, the little hands. This is Pau. Would it be possible at all to see one of the bathroom spaces if they're done? <laughs> Absolutely. Hold on. Thank you so much. Can you still see me? Am I still yeah. on video? Okay, perfect. I'm going to show you the children's house bathroom space first. And then I can take you back. How old was your child again? Um, he'll be around two and a half when he starts with you guys. Okay, so I'll take you back to one of the toddler spaces too. This is the children's house bathroom. See the little potty? Mm-hmm. And the little cubbies right there. Okay. And the little sink with a step stool. And then what's wonderful about this space is that it kind of has a half door. So it provides privacy for the child, but the teacher can still see over and supervise, make sure that the child is okay in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's awesome. And um, show you the toddler bathroom space. Uh, for those of you who need to see it. So this is a young toddler room, which means some of the children uh, will still need uh, to be changed on a changing table. So that's right in this space here. And then some of them will be learning to use the, the, the bathroom. So there's the little bathroom right there. And the step stool that leads up to the sink, so they will be able to use that as well. And then right outside here, we have a little bench where they can wait while they're taking their turn to use the bathroom and all of their cubbies where we'll put their extra clothes, because of course, it takes a lot of tries to get this one right. <laughs> okay, so uh, that completes our tour session for today. And this is the point in our um, session when we open it up to any questions that anybody has. I actually had a quick question, um, I, and I dropped them a little bit late, so I might have missed it. But um, for the toddler room specifically, do you know when we'd be able to meet the teacher for that room? Or teachers? <laughs> Right. So um, we have an entire talent team that is working hard behind the scenes to find some wonderful teachers for, for all of the classrooms for this location. So um, you should be able to, within the next few weeks, have some more information about that. And as soon as we can, we will start to invite people into the building to actually meet with these teachers. Um, and we'll post bios and, and um, do a Q&A session with them so that you feel very comfortable. Because I do know that, that meeting your child's teacher and feeling that personal connection is really important before you can um, drop your child off at a place that you don't really know yet. So stay tuned. We don't have that information just yet, but we do have people working on that on that bit really hard. Thank you so much. Hello, up question. Um, Heidi, you said that some of your teachers go through the prepared Montessorian program. Um, yes. What yes. qualifications do you guys require of your like new hire teachers if they haven't gone through a program or a Montessori certification? 
So all of our teachers are Montessori trained. The difference is that some of us, some of them come to us already having been trained by an accredited program like an AMS Montessori training or AMI or MACT. If they haven't had that uh, training already completed is when we would enroll them in our own internal prepared Montessorian um, program, training program. So that's a great question. And I'm sorry I didn't make that distinction earlier. Um, but they all are Montessori trained trained or in process of training and if they are in process and they will have that mentor that I talked about who will help them through those many steps um, and if they are already trained and experienced teachers then they will they will still have a mentor but it's on a slightly different level than what is needed for a newer teacher kind of like a streamlined continuing education yes, from your exactly program. and what's wonderful about this honestly even at an administrative level and what attracted me to this this job in this position is that even for me there's a continuing education plan that can happen so i can go back and take more training sessions at different levels should i need to and that is really appealing i think to teachers in general that they can continue that process even while they are teachers in classrooms so professional development is really up there in terms of priority for us to provide that for our teachers. Heidi, I know you mentioned like food preparation um, in the toddler and schoolhouse classrooms. Is there any other life skills that you guys emphasize besides just like self-care? Yeah, so there's there's a lot that goes into it. So there are th uh, different components. One is self-care, which is the part where you learn how to dress and undress yourself. And there are zipper and buckle frames. And you learn how to prepare your own food and set the table and feed yourself. Then there's a whole other component that's called care of the environment. And that section includes things like sweeping and mopping and using a dustpan and brush and flower arranging to beautify the environment or making an art picture to put up in your environment. Um, and then there's another section apart from that too, that's the one that we call grace and courtesy, which we consider part of this big umbrella as well, because part what grace and courtesy essentially is, is learning to be respectful about uh, of others and um, of things in your community and your environment. So part of grace and courtesy for a very young one, like a toddler, is honestly just learning to say, I'm sorry, or excuse me, or please and thank you. But we teach them things like how to blow your nose, <laughs> how to wash your hands properly, how to shut the door really quietly so as not to disturb someone, how to put your hand on the teacher's shoulder to wait uh, for your turn to ask for help how to ask help from a friend, how to offer help. So it's this whole section that has over a hundred lessons um, that are part of it. But it is essentially teaching the child to learn how to be a member of their community that then extends into their home community and the wider world around them. And then for the three to six age group, it's all of that, but then we keep adding on to those levels as well. So things like, so care of environment could include things like collecting all the brass or the silver objects in the classroom and bringing them over and polishing them and making them shiny and putting them back. Or it might include giving a lesson to a younger friend who's having a hard time transitioning into school and maybe helping them by reading them a book or preparing snack with them or giving them some, some friendly advice. So those kinds of lessons and it, it keeps going from there. Um, so it really is developmentally set out to tie in with your child's age um, but it's all under the big umbrella of what we call exercises of practical life, just to be in life in general. Hey, I was wondering, um, how do you guys deal with um, behavioral issues like biting or, I don't know, hitting yeah, of course. So um, most people like to think that this doesn't happen at all, but they are toddlers for the most part, and it happens a lot. And so um, how we see it is teaching your child to be a respectful part of their community. And so um, what usually happens in these cases is that the teacher will help the child by removing them into a safer space of the environment. Of course, they will check in. One adult will always check in with the child who might have been bitten or who might have been hurt and make sure that they're okay. There are obviously forms that we fill out on the admin side and we let the parents know if there is an incident, if someone's been hurt or if there's uh, been someone who's been hitting or biting somebody else. So both parents will be informed about that, of course. And then there's the, the whole other side to it where we will 
talk to the child, help them calm down, read books about feelings, help them name what they're feeling and give a, a label to it so it helps them to express themselves. And very often in these situations, it's because the child is so frustrated and they don't have the language yet to be able to talk about it, that in that immediate moment, they, they kind of tend to hit or bite just to, you know, have some space. And so we will talk to them in the, lang in the language appropriate to that age group and help them figure out this is what you can do if you are feeling upset or frustrated or angry. It might be something as simple as saying no or stop or my space, or too close. Like for toddlers, you give them those short phrases that they can use. And uh, very often when we're transitioning a whole group of very new children, the first couple of days can be a little bit like Lord of the Flies, where they're all touching everybody else and taking things from everybody else. But you'll see with consistent, consistent behavior and direction from the guide in the classroom and patience and modeling the behavior from some of the older children in the classroom, they do start to understand what the parameters are. Um, and then they are able to kind of modify their behavior to fit that. So, yeah. And then, of course, there are always the situations where there might be something bigger going on. So we make, a, we make it a point to constantly be in touch with all of the families, with the parent to see, is there a transition happening at home that's making it difficult for this child? Is one parent traveling a little bit when they don't normally do so? Is the child tired? Is there a growth spurt happening? And so they're not sleeping well at night. You know, there are so many other factors that go into it, which is why I think this is so much of a personal connection with each family. The more that you can share with us about your child and about what they're going through at home, the easier it is for us to know that about the child and to be able to meet them at that level and really honestly provide what they need in that moment. Does that make sense? Yes, <clears throat> yes thank you. One more question. I was wondering you. if you guys are providing the food for like lunch or snacks or if we're supposed to send uh, that with our child and um, if you guys have any like restrictions for allergies. It's a great question. I'm sorry I didn't answer that before. So we are a nut-free school. So um, we are very conscious of children who do ha have those allergies. We do provide all of the snacks and they're extremely healthy snacks. So fruit and vegetables, uh, carrot sticks and hummus, um, celery sticks and cream cheese and raisins and that kinds of, uh, those kinds of things. We do not provide lunch for the children because of so many different allergies that our children have. So you would be sending in uh, lunch for your child if they were staying here all day, but all of the other uh, snacks are provided, yes. One last question before I hop off. Do you guys provide like a daily summary of like kind of the work that they're doing in terms of like curriculum and that sort of thing? Yes. So, um, so great question. So depending on the age of your child, so our infants and toddlers get a daily report. There's um, an app called Transparent Classroom that parents and guides use and within, and that's how you'll be sent these daily reports. So of course, for the very young ones, it talks about what they ate and um, what time they ate, how long they napped for and, um, you know, diapering things that, that you will need to know as a parent when you drop off and pick up. So that will come to you every day and that's called a daily report. We also try to make sure that the guides provide three pictures a week for each child in the in the environment or in the classroom so that families um, can see what they're learning over a consistent period of time. And guides also talk about the lessons uh, within that transparent classroom app so that you'll be able to see, oh, my child just learned the stamp game. And here's a picture of them doing the stamp game. And this is what the stamp game is. And then, of course, we kind of have an open door policy. So you can come in at any point and talk with your head of school, with your guide about any specific concerns that you have with your child, or if you just want to know where they are in their language development and how, how can I support them with this at home? That would be a great question to ask your head of school and to ask your guide and we'll kind of follow up with that. Um, and then there'll be time for parent teacher conferences during the school year as well so that you get to sit down with your, your child's guide and learn what specific activities your child has been doing in each of the areas and uh, where they are in that big kind of umbrella of child development. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, if we have no other questions, um, I will take this chance just to say thank you so much for joining us. Feel free to email me or call me if anything else comes up. It was lovely to meet all of you via Zoom. And I'll say thank you, goodbye, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.